Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about thermistors. And this is part, again, of our project of our turkey temp tracker that we are building with our YPI. I apologize, in the last episode I referred to this as the PyCom. PyCom is the parent company and they offer several hardware um, platforms, IoT platforms. The Wi-Fi version is called the YPI, and so that is what we will be using for this project. I've already started playing around with this, and so uh, more on that coming in future episodes. But today, we want to talk about the thermistor. This is the meat temperature probe that I got off of Amazon that we're going to be using to hopefully tell us the temperature inside of our oven as well as inside of our dish. In my case, a turkey, most likely. Haven't bought it yet. Still on the fence. <clears throat> and so I just wanted to take a minute today to talk about thermistors if you've never used them. All a thermistor is, is it's a combination of words, therm being heat or temperature and resistor. So it is a uh, temperature sensitive resistor. The resistance will change according to the temperature that it's exposed to. And there are two types uh, main types of thermistors. There's what's called a PTC thermistor or positive temperature coefficient thermistor or an NTC, a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. And all that means a PTC or positive means that as you apply heat, the resistance goes up. A negative or NTC thermistor, as you apply heat and the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. And what you'll find, um, I just ordered, like I said, a, a standard meat thermometer off of Amazon. There are no specs on this. On a legit thermistor that you would buy from like a DigiKey or something, you're gonna have a lot of information about whether it's a PTC or an NTC and some other information that we're gonna talk about in a second. But when you order it just as a replacement for a device that is supposed to tell you the temperature, you don't have all of it, all of that information. And so there's a very easy way to determine which type you have. And that's apply a temperature change to it and see if the resistance goes up or down. And so what I have here is a boiling cup of water and an ice water cup. And all we need to do is stick our probe into each one and see what the resistor does. And so um, I actually can't see the reading there. I already know that we're dealing with an NTC, which means as the temperature goes down, the resistance should go up. And so if we put this in here, I believe we're sitting at somewhere around one mega ohm put that in our ice water and the temperature uh, the resistance right now that you should see on my meter should be going up quite a bit up because uh, this is very cold and and so as we're doing that as we're seeing that change the all thermistors will have a certain temperature or resistance i apologize resistance at a fixed temperature so that's normally 25 degrees celsius and whatever the resistance is at that temperature is normally what we refer to as the rating of the thermistor is it a one mega ohm thermistor a 10 k thermistor or 1k thermistor in my case like you saw it was around one mega ohm at about room temperature or slightly above room temperature so i have a mega ohm thermistor and that's like that uh, resistance is probably quite high. Now we're going to dip it into my boiling water and you should see that um, resistance come way down. And so just by doing that, you can tell whether you have a PTC or an NTC thermistor. Again, we don't have a data sheet for this, so we have no idea. Now, the resistance in a thermistor changes in a very predictable manner. However, it does not change in a linear manner. And so if you're looking at a graph as the temperature goes up, the resistance does not go up in a nice straight line. It looks more like this. We're going low budget today. If we've got rising resistance here and rising temperature, the resistance curve is gonna look something like this. And that curve, again, will be different based on your thermistor, based on the specifics of your thermistor. But it's going to be the same for all thermistors. So this general curve is gonna be the same for all thermistors. And the way that we can approximate that curve is using what is called the Steinhardt Hart equation. Don't worry about remembering any of this. I'm gonna put links down in the uh, description below if you wanna learn more about it. But basically what the Steinhardt Hart equation is, is a third order approximation of this little graph curve that we have here. I'm gonna take this guy out. Ooh, it's nice and hot. And 
So we can use the Steinhardt Hart equation, and to do that, there are three coefficients that you need to know. Again, these are all things that you would find in the data sheet of your thermistor, which I do not have. The other thing you can do is what's called the beta coefficient or beta equation for a thermistor, which is a further simplification of the Steinhardt Hart, which allows you to do a little less math with just a single coefficient and get a very close approximation to that curve as well. And so, but again, you need to figure out what that beta coefficient is. And the best way to do that, first of all, was I tried to email the uh, manufacturer of this particular thermistor that I picked up off of Amazon to say, oh, I'm sorry, that fell over. Ooh, we're way down, about 400 kilos. To say, could you please tell me what the Steinhardt Hart coefficients are? Um, they're normally A, B, and C is what they're termed. Um, to see just on a wild chance that they would get back to me and say, oh yes, this is the thermistor that we use that we mark up like 300% and stick inside of a nice metal tube. Here's the information that you want. They did not do that, obviously. Uh, but you know, it's worth. it was worth a shot. Um, and so I didn't have that. Now, what you can do, however, is there is a calculator that I found online that I will also link up in the description below where you can take known temperatures fill in a couple of those with the temperature and the resistance that you measure. Um, and again, to measure the resistance, I have these little female connectors that I picked up off of eBay. I soldered a couple of wires on so I can plug it into a breadboard and or hook my meter up to so, uh, for easy measurement. You take the resistance measurement at specific temperatures, you plug it into this calculator, it draws this nice fancy thing for you and says here are the Steinhardt Hart coefficients or the beta coefficient. The problem with that is it's an inexact science, especially in my case where I don't have a controlled temperature where I can say exactly, this is exactly the temperature. And so we're doing a little bit of fudging on the numbers here. Um, and so we're not gonna be as exact as I had hoped, but we're gonna, this is what we got, we're gonna do our best. And so my refrigerator and freezer have temperature listings on the outside. And so what I did was I placed the thermistor in the freezer that says it's supposed to be negative two degrees Fahrenheit, as well as in the fridge, which says it's supposed to be 37 degrees Fahrenheit. I measured, I left it in there for about 20 minutes each so it could settle in on the temperature. I stuck my meter in the fridge and measured the resistance. Um, I have the 25 degree uh, Celsius measurement, which is one mega ohm. And I plugged those in and I got a beta coefficient. And so that's sort of a hacky, uh, fudged way of coming up with the numbers to plug into the equation that eventually our y pi will have to solve to turn basically a voltage from this and a voltage divider to a resistance. So we can do some math in our y pi, I'll show you that in a, in a different episode, and come up with a resistance value, which I can then plug into this beta equation and out pops a temperature. That was a mouthful. If you didn't follow along with all of that, don't worry, I'm gonna have links. You can do some more reading if you would like. Uh, but the very short version of this is, this is an NTC, negative temperature coefficient thermistor, meaning as the heat goes up, the resistance goes down. And based on the resistance that we read from this, we can convert that into a temperature using either the Steinhardt Hart equation or the beta simplification of that. And so that is the short version of what we are gonna do and how we are gonna proceed to connect this to our YPI device. Now, in early testing, spoiler alert, it would have been better to have a thermistor with a lower resistance. I am running into issues because this has such a high resistance, you know, one uh, close to a mega ohm at just uh, room temperature. It would have been nice if that was closer to 10K. I'm running into some other issues, which I will talk about in a future episode, but that is gonna wrap us up for today. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. A lot of learning I did around thermistors and the different types. And again, you know, this characterization curve of how it, um, how the resistance changes with temperature. So question of the day, what is your favorite hot drink? Personally, mine is hot chocolate. I love some hot chocolate on a nice cold snowy day. What is your favorite hot beverage? 
I appreciate everybody watching. Stay tuned for future progress on this project. I hope to get a couple more episodes out in the next few days. Uh, if you have any questions, please stick them in the comments below. Otherwise, happy hacking and thanks so much for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.